All right, everybody, how y'all doing tonight? I want to thank y'all for tuning in with One Objective. This is going to be something new that we're doing on Tuesday nights. Uh, we're going to try to grow this thing. And uh, what's going on? What's going on, Chris? Keep an eye on us, man. Make sure everything stays good and clear on uh, on that side. But uh, we're going to be doing this more on Tuesday nights, trying to work it out where we can have James on also. Uh, we're trying to do it more through Skype. And that way he, we can actually see James as we're talking. And, and we're doing it this way to be a little more interactive with you guys. So uh, I hope I hope we can grow this thing to something big that, that helps everyone out. That's what our intentions are is to kind of come on here and kind of be like a live chat room for everybody to talk fishing. You know, uh, whatever the topic is we have going on at the moment. Uh, we want to try to be more interactive with everybody. So, you know, if I'm on here talking spinner baits like we are tonight and buzz baits, I'd like for you guys to, uh, to to chime in and we can kind of help each other on techniques and, and how we do it. I, I mean, I'll give my setups and James will give his setups, but um, we, we're like to see how everybody does it. So um, we're just really excited about how this, how this is going to come along. And then starting in October, our plans are to have all our podcast show all live as well. So you can either listen in uh, through iTunes or on Blog Talk Live. Or you can go and watch us on YouTube. So uh, that we tried that a while back, and then when I moved to the new house, just didn't have the uh, the setup to make all that work right, like I did at the old house. So um, and a lot of that was internet speed and all that. But we got everything bumped up now. Everything's good. So wanted to uh, welcome everybody to the chat as also. So if you're if you're watching, get on in the chat and, and let's talk some fishing. But so let's kind of get on into the show. Uh, I want to talk to everybody first about our sponsors. Uh, you can see on the background of all the sponsors we got. Let me go ahead and click this real quick. That way you can see you can see all our sponsors, which it was pretty much the same thing. But um, guys, go please check them out. Uh, go check out their Facebook pages, like them, Instagram, all that. Uh, go find their YouTube channels. Most of them's got YouTube channels, so go go find them there as well. So, um, but anyway, so that way you can kind of give them some love. But let's kind of go on and start talking about, uh, get into some fishing. But before we do that, let's talk about 9-11. Uh, today is the anniversary. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a somber day. I, I was listening to some of the radio, on, on the radio this morning, people was talking about, you know, uh, you will always remember where you were at that day that that happened, the day that you found out what happened. And I just kind of want to share a little bit. I, I know I was in high school then. It was uh, my senior year. Um I was at a vocational school when we got the word, so and was able to go in in the classroom and sit down and watch everything, and then see him hit the Pentagon, and it was just, uh, you know, it's just stuff you never forget. And I hope that us as Americans, we never have to live through that again. Um, I hope our kids. I know I got uh, two beautiful kids, and I hope that they don't ever have to go through anything. I know I didn't have to go through anything, but just witnessing it and all that, and but the people that had to go through it, you know, and. I uh, just want to thank all our first responders uh, for everything they do. I know that, uh, especially the police department and, and firefighters, I, I, I'm not the man for that job, so if it wasn't for guys like you and girls like you, uh, this country wouldn't be like it is. And that goes as well as for the military. Thank you for everybody that has served, uh, is serving, and then the ones that have sacrificed all. So let's kind of get off of that. Let's talk a little bit about the hurricane. we got Hurricane Florence. She's coming in. I think Virginia is going to, I mean, parts of Virginia is going to get some heavy rain, but I think we're going to be spared when it comes to a lot of damage, when it comes to like wind and all that. So uh, that's just what they're saying so far. A lot of it, though, is going to track, come in through Wilmington and track down through, uh, they're talking about it turning and going through uh, North Carolina. Uh, so a lot of guys in Virginia are going to be spared. A lot of people are going to be spared in Virginia just with the massive wind. I think they're talking 50 plus mile an hour, but you know, the real damaging winds but with all the rain coming and the ground's already saturated here it'll be an, oh gosh i don't even like think about the rivers getting blown out and smallmouth fishing going to crap again so uh, anyways just kind of keep eye on that and everybody that's in the uh area please you know if you can get out of there do if not stay safe everybody and uh what do they say on the radio don't drive through the waters turn around don't drown <laughs> but Anyways, that's all I'm going to say on that. Let's get into fishing. That's what this show's about, fishing. I want to get in and start talking about it. 
And the first thing I want to talk about is what we got coming up. We joined up with uh, Pro's Choice to do a, ter- a winter tournament series. Um, it's $100. Let me get the schedule up here. So it's going to start October 14th. So it's October 14th, October 27th, uh, November 3rd, and November 25th. And that's just the qualifying events for the Classic. All you got to do is fish two events. So we're doing two on Sunday, two on Saturday. We understand some people can't fish on Sundays because of church and family and all that. We understand some people can't fish on Saturdays because football and I think basketball is going on. I don't do much basketball. Sports are going on. School's in. It gets kind of crazy that time of the year. I know it's crazy for me. My son plays football, and it gets really crazy. So I knew Saturdays I wasn't going to be able to do it. I really don't like to fish too much on Sundays if I can help it, go to church with the family, but I might have to fish each Sunday. So. Uh, make sure you join us on that. December 2nd is the classic. It's going to be a $100 entry fee. Uh, like I said, two, you must fish two of the four events to qualify. You receive a ticket for every tournament fished for a prize at the classic. So every time you'll be getting a, uh, a raffle ticket to go towards uh, the prize that will be given away at the classic. Uh, so make sure you can join if you can. If you're around Smith Mountain Lake area, uh, please come out and join us. I know there's a lot of other events that's going on, uh, but we just hope that you can join us. So, anyways, let's get away from that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Major League Fishing. Uh, they come out with the news of they're going to be doing a Pro Tour series. And I just finished reading. I tried to read it through the day, and I just finally finished reading it uh, before I got on here and was trying to figure everything out. That It's kind of... The article's good, but it's still kind of vague. I guess they're still working out things. They didn't want to release too much, but it does tell you right much in it also what they're doing. So it looks like there's going to be some qualifying tournaments that is going to be a Major League Fishing style event to qualify for the tour. Uh, They're still going to be doing the ones you see on TV, on the Outdoor Channel and all that with the pros and all that. Now, I don't understand if you're going to be qualifying and fishing against some of these pros on tour or some of these pros that fish the elites in FLW, are they going to be doing the tour? Because I know, you know, Boyd Duckett and uh, whoo, Gary Klein, they uh, – did I say Gary, Gary Klein? Yeah, the Gary Klein. Gary, Gary Klein and them are, are ones that kind of own, from what I understand, Major League Fishing. So – I would assume that they would schedule around some of those, but I know it's hard when you're trying to schedule around FLW and you're trying to schedule around uh, on the tour series. So, hold on one second. Let me check something here. Just want to make sure I ain't got – make sure everything's working still good. But, anyways, but there, there's going to be qualifying events to get on. And I don't know how they're going to do it because, I don't know, on the tour series, if you got – I think they're talking like 80 anglers. So if you got 80 anglers, are they going to have 80 cameramen? Or they're just going to do kind of like how the elites do. They kind of see who starts putting some fish on the boards, and then they start chasing them down with the camera boats. I would think they're going to have a angler, uh, a, a cameraman in every boat on the tour series. I've seen some people talking about it. And then just trying to find the judges to do that. You know, that's going to be the next thing to do. Or are they going to do something with uh, co-anglers and, and everybody's keeping each, each other uh, right on the rules. But I, I don't know how they're going to work all of that out. It doesn't really say a whole lot about it, but I do know that they're going to be doing a tour series. There's some qualifying events uh, to get into that. Now, I know some some tournaments around Smith Mountain Lake here, uh, I think it was a series down at Bugs Island, too, I've seen, where they're kind of going into that major league fishing style. And I think it's a good thing. I mean, a <clears throat> guy, Dwayne Lamb, he shared uh, a video, I mean, a picture the other day of – I want to say seven or eight fish on the back of a boat dead where they just people throw them back in after weigh in. I don't know. Granted, that isn't that isn't a lot of fish that was killed. I've seen more in events, especially when fish are caught deep and it's really hot, kind of like it is now. <clears throat> I've seen a lot more, and that's due to people not taking proper fish care when it comes to, you know, having – uh, rejuvenate or uh, there's a couple there's a couple other things that they I kind of been in a loop on that uh, since I've been doing kayak tournaments but I know there's a few other things you know you can put sprite in there or seven up and uh, fish are bleeding that kind of helps stop the bleeding and and there's a lot of there's a lot that you can do to save a fish so but some people don't take the time 
you know, they, they, they chunk it and wind them in. They catch fish, they chunk it in the live load, they keep on going. Uh, I know when me and Chris or me and Alan or me and James fished, I was very, like, conscious on our fish not dying because I, me and James have <laughs> we've lost tournaments due to fish dying you know you catch some fish shallow they were okay in a live well but then you catch a couple fish deep that was kind of before I knew anything about benzene but we didn't keep the fish cool like we should have and they died and so after that I was always hell bent on making sure the water was the right temperature I always chunking ice I brought I had ice in my cooler in my boat, but then I also had an extra cooler that was just full of ice for that. Now, Cool Well and all of them had some some neat tricks that you could do. The only problem I had with Cool Well was if you keep sucking water back in the boat, you know, uh, if you had to keep putting more water in your live well or recirculate and taking some out, putting new in uh, for oxygen purposes. It seemed like the Cool Well for, for me on my boat, and a lot of people liked it, it didn't last long. Like the water just because you're constantly sending warm water through those veins and it was just melting ice quick so it did okay for a little while but it say it buys you some time where you have to use all your ice in your other cooler but other than that it was a really good uh good system seem to know smallmouth think very hardy yeah yeah they don't they don't like warm water at all you know when it comes if that's what you're talking about they don't like warm water Especially on the lakes. I know in the rivers, it's, uh, yeah, you don't have none that far south yet. Yeah, man, if you ever get a chance to come up here, it's it's really good smallmouth fishing up here on the river. I have a good time. Love, love. And that's why this with this hurricane coming in, it's killing me because I'm in a month-long event right now for the KBF. And I was kind of putting all my eggs in that basket to be on the river and catch some, some good smallmouth. I was starting to get on some when the river started settling out, getting back down to normal level. And then now we got this coming. So it's just been a terrible wet season for, for river fishing. Uh, I don't like getting out when the water's too fast. just makes me a little nervous. I always wear my life vest, but it makes me a little nervous. I don't want to dump everything. So, But anyways, kind of getting back to it, you know, just I think Major League Fishing is in the right step, in the right direction uh, to grow the sport, to get more people in. My main concern, though, is all right, they're going on a tour. They're going to have these qualifying events. Is what's the price going to be to enter? What's the payback going to be like? That's kind of the big thing. You know, that's what keeps a lot of people. I know a lot of good fishermen that could probably go pro, or if they had the opportunity to fish the opens. But just the money's not there. You know, and in, in in this industry now, there's so many people wanting to be on a pro staff. There's so many people just wanting to have a sponsor to say they got a sponsor and, and i hope i ain't offending nobody over this but that's about what this industry's gotten into fat cat newton makes a lot of jokes about i think he just did something about making a tour and you know you must have sponsors and you must wear your jersey to the grocery store and mow your grass in you know you do got guys like that and so that that kind of hurts the fishing industry in a way because everybody wants to be on a pro staff you got some people that, I even see it, there's some people that just don't even fish tournaments. They just go fish farm ponds, and they get sponsors. Do I have a problem with that? No, because if you're doing a good job at promoting a company and you're catching fish, that's just what they want to see. They want to see you promoting their product, getting some value out of you, but also you catching fish with their product. So if you're doing a really good job at that, I, I see it, but it just does make it kind of tough. If you like tournament fishing, it makes it kind of tough. But also, if you're into filming, you think of Gene Jensen, you, uh, you got uh, Chad Hoover, all of them that do fishing shows. They don't really do tournaments. It works out perfect for that side. So it's a double-edged sword when you get to talking sponsorship, and I don't want even want to get into that tonight because it's just I, I could go on all night about that. But So hopefully Major League Fishing takes it to a level where it's affordable to get into it, at least some of the smaller qualifying events, um, to work your way up to that. So I I don't know how that's going to go. So we'll just have to see how that plays out here in the next couple weeks, uh, months, hopefully weeks, kind of figure out what they got going on. Maybe we can get Boyd Duckett or Gary Klein or somebody to come on on our podcast and kind of talk about what, uh, what is coming up with that. So... 
we'll see how that goes, see how we work that out. Well, I know we, we're about due to do another podcast. Uh, speaking of that, if y'all haven't listened to our podcast, if you're new to the show, um, or new to One Objective, figuring out what we are, we're, we do podcasts, we do some U- we do YouTube videos, as we're doing right now, but uh, but you can go on blog talk, uh, blogtalkradio.com. You can either go on outdoor or you can just search one objective and you'll, you'll find us. Our, you just type in one objective. It'll come up. Now, if you go on iTunes, you can just type in bass fishing. Most of the time, we like the second or third one that comes up. And we'll be pulled right up. You can list all our episodes. If you do and you like them, please go in and rate them on iTunes if you don't mind. I prefer a good rating. But if you don't like it, hey, you know, put it on there. So, but anyways, we're just trying to get some more people following on over. We're doing really well. Uh, I, I'd like to thank everybody that has listened to our shows. Um, it's just from what it started, you know, we were getting 50, 50, uh, sorry if you hear my kids up here running around. We were getting 50 listeners a show, and so now we're getting, you know, four, five, six thousand 6,000 listeners to a show. So, Really appreciate everybody that's listened so far, and it's given us some encouragement to keep on going on. We really love to hear from our listeners. We love to hear from our viewers on YouTube. So if you can comment on these videos, you, you like them, comment on them, and we really appreciate it. So before I get too far into that and keep jabber jawing, uh, we'll kind of get into some fishing here. So um, uh, getting dry throat. So we had the. Virginia Kayak Bass Challenge uh, Saturday on Chickahominy River. I've been on the Chickahominy River before when I was young. I don't really remember a whole lot about it. Uh, and then the whole title thing, you know, as a kid, you're not even paying no mind to that. Talked to James. He's fished the James River before. He's fished, I fished Potomac before, but I didn't play into the tide thing. I didn't know nothing about it when I got on it. And uh, uh, thanks, PGM. Appreciate it, buddy. Um I didn't know nothing about it. So when I seen this tournament, when Casey had this event on it, I didn't even know if I was going to make it because of my work schedule. And then we got everything worked out with my work schedule. And then I was really pumped about it. Then I started doing research. I'm, you know, I'm picking James's brain on the tide, uh, figuring some of that out. I'm looking at tide charts and I'm, I'm going on Google because Google is Google maps or, uh, uh, shoot. Yeah, any kind of maps, any kind of satellite imagery you can get is perfect, especially, but the best thing to do when you're going into looking at tidal systems, for me, uh, is have different satellite imagery. So I'll go on my phone, on my iPhone, and just go to maps, zoom into everything, because sometimes you'll, certain pictures will show it at high tide, and then if I go on my work phone, which is a Samsung, it, it was showing it at high tide, and I think it was summertime. On my phone, on the iPhone, it's actually showing at wintertime, low tide. I can see all the little cuts and channels perfectly. I can see around, you know, if it's around about low, I don't know if it was at the lowest tide, but you can tell it's low. I can see what still holds water. Now, when I got there, it was a little different because some of that stuff that still held water was just thick grass. I mean, I'm digging trying to get to it with a kayak. So I just did a lot of research on the low tide, high tide, slack tide. And, you know, James, me and James kept talking back and forth about how, what's the best tide to fish. And low tide, tide going out, low tide seemed like it was probably the best for James. I mean, he's calling, hey, man, I already got a limit. You know, I'm still, I'm still paddling to my spot and kind of freaking out a little bit. I'd have made about four or five cash, you know, and he's still calling, man, I'm upgrading, I'm calling. I'm like, gosh, dog, man, what the world? But that's how them systems are. Tidal river systems are fast. And, and I've heard people talk about it, and I never really paid much mind you know you know you, okay yeah yeah whatever so I, I kind of pulled in and i had some boats in front of me and i was kind of getting spun out right then because i'm in a kayak i can't go far james like man come down here where i'm fishing at i believe there's plenty of fish but then i'm like man i gotta paddle all the way back across the river load up and head down to where he's at and paddle to where he's at this is what yes compare google map to google earth bing map all look, yeah, you're right, man. They, they all look different. All the maps are different. And it's just so much crazy. It's crazy how much you can see on everything in different maps and pick up different stuff. So, But I was talking to James, and uh, I just I, I had a, a boat that was on some docks. That, that was my main plan. I was going to fish docks all day. 
I was going to throw some Cinco's. And like everybody, if you go on YouTube and you type in Chickahominy River, it's Cinco's, it's uh, frogs, it's just the same stuff. They, I know they see the same stuff all the time. So I went into it. I was getting spun out immediately. James was kind of talking about throwing some buzz bait stuff. I was like, all right, you know, I'm just going to pick this one up and, and start throwing it. I, start, flipped, I actually picked a Texas rig up because I come up on a dock pole. I was like, man, that looks really good. Flipped over, boom, catch one. Kept doing it for a couple poles, and then I, it just wouldn't get no bites. Went on into the inside, started throwing a buzz bait. And, man, I had a 16-incher hit it, and it was crazy how strong those tidal river fish fight. I mean, they are strong. And, I, I, you know, James has talked about I've heard other people talk. You hear the pros talk about how strong they are, but you don't really think. I catch smallmouth all the time, so I'm kind of like, you know, yeah, well, small river smallmouth probably just as strong. But I'm not going to say they outdo a river smallmouth, but I'm going to say they're, they're comparable. Like, it's, it's crazy how much they fight. So as the tide's going out, I can tell I, I had a couple blow-ups on my buzz bait. I didn't want to throw a uh, trailer, so let me kind of go to you and, and go and show you what I was throwing. Um, here we go. So this right here, just what I was throwing. This is just uh, this. I made this buzz bait. I mean, it's it's nothing to it. A buzz bait's a buzz bait. Uh, the trick to buzz baits is how long you can make how much noise you can get them things to make the squalling sound and and, and all that. So. Anyways, this this is just what I was throwing. Just this bait right here. Actually, I just cut it off my rod not too long ago, and it's been these little buzz baits have been good. This is I want to say this one was a three eighths or I cannot remember a quarter. Uh, I got them all on one size, and this is all what I throw. I, I, you know, and the only the only two I only do two different colors. I do black, and I do white. I don't I keep it simple when it comes to buzz bait fishing. I I don't throw nothing crazy uh it's just black or white that's it so just remember that when you know i see so many different colors out there and they probably different colors probably work but you got to remember this is a reaction bite so when it's cloudy i'm throwing black if it's really dirty either way if it's cloudy or not i'm throwing black or if you got a little bit of clear water and it's sunny this is a good color right here but the thing about the tidal river was it had a tea-colored water, as James calls it, and I was actually going to go with black on that. It was a cloudy day, but I just picked this one up first. I already had it on. I thought the sun was actually going to be out earlier than it was, so I just I just kept this on and started catching fish. So I got to a, I finally got to a spot where the sun was coming out. Let's go do this here. The sun was coming out. And, sorry, but the tide was getting to a point where it was almost the highest. And I, I, I kind of, let me go backtrack a little bit. I said the tide was going out when we got there. The tide was coming in when we got to the river. And it finally got to its highest spot, and I know it was going to have a slack time there. So all I did was turn around. I tried to fish some docks. I got to where I was kind of getting out the grass, it seemed like. And I, it seemed like everything that bit had grass near the dock. So all I did was turn around and go back up go back up to what I was fishing, but I moved in on them because I knew the fish were going to pull up. Tide, you know, the tide's coming up. Fish are moving up shallower to feed on, on bait fish and, and everything. If, I'm, this is the way I look at it. I'm assuming the bait fish are going up there to feed on stuff that's, you know, that's starting to water, starting to cover up, you know, the grass and, and whatever else is in the grass that the bait fish love to eat. So the bass are going to move up there naturally. So I go up there and I start, I had some rock walls that had no water on it earlier. I go up there and start throwing a buzz bait down it and boom, I catch another one about 15 inches long. Worked out perfect on that. So then I could not get that to run the rest of the time. I got in a slack tied wasn't doing nothing wasn't moving sun come out well then i have lily pads and the picture that i had on for the thumbnail for this was actually what i was looking at it was lily pads when it's in the water come up it come up over some of those lily pads some of them were underwater and all that so that's when i moved over to this 
This is just a War Eagle spinnerbait. This is a mouse color. And let's see if it'll focus. It's just got a little silver head with a gold blade. I think this right here is actually called an Oklahoma blade. It's kind of a mix between a Willow blade and a Colorado blade. But they are, these war eagles are smooth coming through the water. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, they're, they throw easy. They, you know how spinner baits will do this, the attorney side. I know you got to tune spinner bait, especially if you start catching a lot of bass on them, but I don't feel like I have to tune a war eagle that much. But anyways, as I'm taking this bait, I'm slow rolling it through the pads. Now, most pads that I've ever fished, you don't slow roll a spinner bait through because it's going to get hung up every time. But the way these pads are, they're like a V pad. If that makes any sense, I, you know, a lot of guys that fish that river know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's just a, it's just a, it's just a pad. It makes like a heart shape, like a V shape. I was casting that thing out there, and I could bring it through. I was just going under the pads. Now, if I could see some pads that were a little bit further down, I was trying to slow it a little bit further down, get by the pads, pop it a little bit, and it would come out and hit it. Now, I could not use a trailer hook on it because I was going to get hung up. I tried it. And I kept getting hung up on every daggone thing. So I said, I got to take the trailer hook off. I had a couple of swat at it because you figure they're just coming out, swatting at it, and they're going back in. And I finally caught a decent fish doing that. Now my day's starting to turn around because I already had a limit. I didn't talk about that but because it wasn't much to talk about. I had a limit of some 10-inch fish. And I was kind of struggling. I see people putting big fish on the boards, 18s, 19s. And I'm like, man, this is, I'm catching 10-inch fish. What the freak am I doing wrong? And kind of talk about how I knew if, if none of you've ever fished a, uh, a kayak tournament or done anything to tourney X, most of the time you can kind of go in and see what everybody's doing. Now, Casey will turn it off about, I don't know, somewhere between 12 and 2 o'clock. So you can't see what everybody else has got, but you can keep submitting your fish. You kind of have an idea what you got when you go in, but you don't know what everybody else has got. And some people will wait till towards the end of the tournament to put them on. So, and it depends on what service they have and all that, if they even have the ability to do it when they're fishing. Now, I was able to keep putting each fish on there and no problems, but, so anyways, I, all these people are catching big fish. I'm barely hanging on in the top 10, and I was like, man, something's got to happen. So, I was waiting on that slack, that, tie, that slack tide to end and the tide to pull out, and I come up to a spot that looked like it made like a like, it was the, the channel swing, but on the inside, it was a stream that run through. It was like a cut through, so you didn't have to go all the way around the channel. It was like a cut through. Some boats would come through there, and I seen this little thing with a light on it, and I see it start doing this. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with that light? And I realized it was current. And I said, man, that's a pile load of current coming over that spot. So I paddled on out there, and it was. I, it, I mean, it was pushing my kayak fast. I got a power pole on my kayak, which is amazing i don't know how i ever fish in a kayak without a power pole and james i apologize for telling you you're an idiot for putting a power pole on your boat <laughs> because i don't know how you ever fish without a you know when you get in the river man it's perfect you got a lot of wind it's perfect if you got a lot of boat traffic and it keeps washing you up on the bank or whatever you're trying to retire or you're trying to stay on a spot you can power pole on there and and, and do what you need to do so Throwing that plug out there, power pole is by far the best investment I ever made on my kayak. And I could see where it'd be the best investment on a bass boat. So anyways, I pull up on this spot, I chuck that spinnerbait over there, and boom, one hits it. And he's about 18 inches long. He jumps, slings it off. I'm freaking because I really need that fish. I cast back over there, boom, hang another 18 inch. I get it up to the boat. And the blades hang up in the net. So I, I think I got him good. And I'm going to scoop him. And he dives again. These hang up in the net. And he just pulls it right out of his mouth. You know, I'm like, freak. That's two good tournament fish gone. If I'd have had them, I'm not saying I'd have won. But I'd have placed pretty good in the event. I fire back over there. And I catch another 18. I get that one in the boat take my picture, throw them back, fire back over again. I catch a 15, and I think it was another 14 or something like that I catch, or another 15. So that's how fast it happens on a title system. And, and 
I thought people were crazy when he was talking about it, but I didn't realize it was happening that fast. I thought maybe in a spot you go up and catch one here, 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 here. No, it was in one spot. Probably lucky. I don't know. But I'm ready to get back on the Chickahominy and try it again. Love to get on the Potomac and try it. But, you know, just the weather's coming through now. It's going to be a little off where I can get on those. But definitely going to make a trip back to uh, Chickahominy here. Hopefully, maybe this month if I get lucky. But we'll see, depending on how this hurricane goes and messes the rivers up. And I'm sure they're going to get a lot of rain. It's probably going to mess all that up. So, But anyways, so that's kind of my what I did uh, when it comes to fishing the title system. I ended up placing seventh in that tournament. I want to congratulate James on his uh, his top three finish. Casey and him haven't put out for AOI yet. They ain't put out, you know, how everybody's at on points yet. So I don't want to say too much. We kind of figured out the math and where everybody's at, but I don't want to say nothing until Casey and them uh, release that. So, but anyways, I'd love to, <laughs> I love to announce it, but I just can't right now. But so, anyways, this was my setup right here. Uh, I, like I say, I did catch one off Texas rig, but I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't want to talk about that too much because that fish was so small. I use a little 10, 11 inch fish. So, you know, that don't, that don't get you, that don't get you nowhere. It just gets you some points on the board is about it. So anyways, that that's my setup. Now, when it comes to throwing these kind of baits, I always use fluorocarbon when I throw spinner baits. No matter what, fluorocarbon all the way. And I use about anywhere between 12 and 14 pound test. Most of the time it's 14 pound. Would you get to these smaller baits like this and you're trying to finesse them through the grass and, and all that? Sometimes your small, just a little bit smaller line helps out, but that's personal preference. But, you know, but anyways, I the rod I was actually using was a Falcon rod and it was the, it's a, a crankbait rod. It's a, a the Cajun Baby crankbait rod. It's mainly for like square bills and shallow running baits, but it, it's a perfect, perfect spinnerbait rod. I loved it. That's the first time I really used that rod for that. And when I picked it up and felt the tip and, and seen it had a little bit of soft tip on it, but a nice backbone, I knew that was going to be a good spinnerbait rod. And the reason why I want a little bit of backbone with a spinnerbait because you're throwing them, most of the time you're throwing a spinnerbait, not unless you're going on windy points and stuff, but you're, I like throwing them in trees, um, the grass, stuff like that. So you want a nice backbone to help pull them out you know give a little bit of power to pull them out and i'm just throwing a revo sx um six four to one i don't use a real fast speed ratio for that now on this i was actually using just a regular buku medium heavy um rod and just but i use mono when i when i fish a buzz bait and that's just so because it's a fast bait. You can use fluorocarbon. I know people use braid. I just like it's. I'm old school. Everything top water has got to be mono. So, unless I'm using like a whopper plopper, well, I take that back. I, I use I use braid on a whopper plopper most of the time, which braid braid floats. The reason why I don't use fluorocarbon, especially on a whopper plopper when I'm fishing the river, is because uh, fluorocarbon sinks. It seems to get caught up in the current a lot more. So when you're making that cast and you're trying to just, you know, catch up real quick, it seems like the current catches that line too quick and it gets sucked down into the water and pulls your bait around a little bit. I don't seem like I get a lot of that when I go to mono, so that's that's my biggest thing with that. I use mono for that. But anyways, I use mono. I use 12 to 14 pound mono on this. You got enough stretch in it to kind of take out that reaction time. When you set the hook, you know, sometimes when something comes up and you just want to set the hook instantly, Mono kind of helps take that because it's already got a little bit of stretch in it. So mono kind of takes that out of there. But, um, and just the, you know, Falcon, Falcon Buku medium, medium heavy action rod with the, and I use a seven, uh, seven to one gear ratio Revo SX for that. So if anybody's got any questions on buzz baits and spinner baits, and uh, we'll go a little, I might go into a little bit more of a session on, you know, the times I like throwing buzz baits. But other than that, I think I'm going to be about done on, on this topic for tonight. Um, hold on a second. I'm getting, getting, getting thirsty. 
But next, I'm hoping next show we have James on. He can kind of go over some of his, you know, I have my setup and James will have his setup. We all fish different. Every fisherman. No fisherman fishes the same. So, and if you don't believe me, go check out our shows and just listen to how a lot of these pros set up everything. Uh, what about trailer hooks? Um, just kind of like, like when I was fishing Chickahominy, I, I didn't use trailer hooks because of the grass. It was, it, I was get, having more time being hung up than I felt like I was actually reeling in, you know, and, and trying to get my retrieve right. So I don't throw trailer hooks on that. Now, when I'm fishing windblown points where it's a lot of rock, if I'm bringing these things, spinner baits and buzz baits by docks, especially on floating docks where I got that the buzz bait turned to where it will, you know, when you cast that there, it'll pull to the side and go up against the dock or either side, I'll use a trailer hook. Because if you watch a bass, when he comes out on a floating dock, he's got to come out and then he's got to turn and they'll hit it like that. And the trailer hook most of the time gets them on that. But that's the only time I use trailer hooks on those. Uh, but most of the time when I'm throwing a spinnerbait up in trees and grass, and I just don't use a trailer hook. I, I know some people do, and they have great success with it, but I seem like I get hung up every single time I throw a trailer hook up in there. And it'll be right in the thick of it, right in the juice where the fish live at, and I'll hang up. So I just stay away from it and – Help, hopefully my odds will be a little bit better catching catching fish than it would be catching trees. So, uh, color wise, like say, whoops, oh, there goes that one. Color wise, with the spinner baits, I keep mine most of the time simple shad colors. I love the mouse color, and then I love a white color with some flake, uh, like a, I say flake, more like a, a striped color. So if you buy a skirt that ain't been made yet you'll see where it's white and then it's got like black stripes in it. That's kind of like the color I like to throw in those. And then I'll have a white and chartreuse. So really, I guess four main colors that I throw. But I, most of the time I keep it simple. I just put this mouse color on that day just to kind of see how it did. Uh, I, I used the Smith uh, during the fall and early spring, and it does really good. And I said, well, I've caught a lot of fish off of it. But the main, the main thing that got me to throw in this color was that gold blade, that gold Colorado blade. I know it's going to be a little bit dingy water. Gold works really good when you get a kind of a tea color water, and then I had the Oklahoma blade. That was my main reason for going with that right there. Some of the other baits I had, the War Eagles, were mainly willow leaf blades. I didn't have many that was set up like this, which I'll be buying more now. But So that's kind of the main reason. The blade selection was the reason I went with that. Not really the skirt selection too much. If it was a black skirt or if it was a white skirt, either way I'd have went with it because of the blades. I didn't even pay much attention to the skirt color. So, But most of the time, spinnerbait fishing, I don't do much during the summer. It don't do that well for me, not unless I have a just a – it's been cloudy all day and you got some wind. I, like I said, I can go out and fish points. But most of the time, if fish are too deep, you can go to a bigger blade. Bigger blade, bigger – you can go to a one-ounce spinnerbait, get down there real deep wind it on the points and stuff like that and catch them that's just not me that's not what i do a lot of I, most time if it's that point i'm carolina rigging or drop shot and or shaky head or something like that texas rigging so for me to be throwing it this time was a little odd most time like I say it's early spring and it's fall i love throwing a spinnerbait in the fall and i love throwing a buzz bait in the fall springtime it's okay but i don't do as well with it as i do during the fall um so just kind of keep that in mind. But I know a lot of people, I know some people, that's the only thing they throw in the spring is a buzz bait, especially when the fish are on beds to help locate the bass. And that way you can, you know, find out where he's at. Even if he short strikes, you know he's probably got a, a bed over there. So other than that, anybody got any any other questions? So that's about all I got for that for this session. I, I want to keep these shows not real long, 30 minutes. We actually went a little over. I was kind of rambling on about a few other things at the beginning. I don't want to keep them real long. I just want people to come in, get some tips and techniques, and kind of, you know, maybe help them out for their next event when they go out. And this is kind of what's going on right now. This is what I did. So hopefully maybe somebody can go out and duplicate it, make it work for them. I guarantee you won't be on the river anytime in the Virginia area. So hopefully it'll work for you somewhere in a lake or something. But 
other than that, that's all I really got to say about that uh, when it comes to technique-wise uh, for this segment. Next segment, it's probably going to go a little more into uh, finesse fishing. I'm thinking about going on and start talking about drop shotting and shaky heading, when to use it, which one to use, how long a leader, all that. So also stay tuned. I know James is working on another video. He's talking about nets. Uh, I'm going to be working on my next video on life vest selection, uh, especially like for kayaking and all that. It's We've seen so many people drown kayaks. And it just really bothers me that no one has the intelligence to put a life vest on. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that high. If you pick the right life vest, it's 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 comfortable. And I, I didn't think I was going to like wearing a life vest all the time. I had an incident last year on the James River. Luckily, my dad was with me. The water temperature was about 48, 49. And it could have been, it could have ended really bad if I didn't have a life vest on. Hypothermia was already setting in. My legs were cramping out. It was doing all I could to even paddle uh, to kick my legs. So, like I said, if it wasn't for my dad kind of there telling me, you better kick him legs, boy, that, you know, it, and my life vest, my life vest 100%. So, guys, please, you know, wear your life vest. And, that, and that's what that one's going to be about. It's going to be about life vest. So, picking the right one for the time of the year and what you're doing because that's everything. You want to make sure it's comfortable enough to wear. So, and then we're going to be working on some more fishing videos through the fall getting some more technique stuff up so guys if you haven't subscribed please go subscribe to our channel please share it with your friends let them know what we're doing we're here to help everybody out and but i want you guys to to help us out as well if you see something that we're doing you're like hey man this might help you catch a little more fish try this next time we love to hear it uh i'm not i don't mind someone telling me hey man try this because it, it really helps out a lot Drop frame you had bottom of the window streaming. Okay, sorry. Um, so, anyways, that's all I got tonight, guys. If y'all have any other thing you want me to cover for the next coming up show, please email it to me at oneobjectivebf at gmail.com. Or you can uh, look, I didn't even transition over and I still got it on that screen. I'm sorry. Uh, or you can message us on Facebook or Instagram. If you haven't followed us on there, please go out there and uh, check us out on those. And if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to learn about or us to cover about or talk about, message to us. We'll, we'll be gladly to cover it. We'd love to come up with content to, to talk with you guys and get you guys, uh, see what y'all's guys' opinion are. So I'm hoping the next James, uh, next James, the next show we'll have James on. It might not be video, but we'll have him uh, on, on through Skype. And we can at least talk to him and see what his input is on, on certain techniques and, and go from there. So, guys, y'all have a great night. I appreciate everything that y'all have done and, and subscribing and following us. And uh, Bass Cat Dave and PGM and Holden, I appreciate everybody commenting on us. And I hope we can grow this uh, from, what, 10 viewers tonight to hopefully several thousand viewers uh, here soon. So, anyways. Guys, I appreciate everything. Y'all have a great night. Everybody be safe if you're in the path of the hurricane. And uh, and please share your fish pictures with us. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.